Hi everyone, in this chapter we're going to be talking about plant assets. Well, what are plant assets? Plant assets can also be referred to as fixed assets. Um, they fall into that long-term asset category. The idea is that they are assets that you use in your business, uh, long-term assets. So their life is always greater than a year. They're tangible, meaning you can touch them. We do use them in our business. Um, and just to go on that, if let's say I had bought a piece of property, so uh, something like a building would obviously fall into a plant asset category. But if I bought the building purely with the purpose of reselling it and as an investment property, it never became part of my business, then it actually gets listed as an investment, not a plant asset. Plant assets are those sorts of long-term assets that you use in your business. Things like tables and buildings and cars and so on. And here's the examples. I got ahead of myself. Equipment, land, buildings, furniture, computers. This is just a general list. Um, land improvements. Let's be clear though. Land improvements is not land. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a slide or so. This is just a general list of what kinds of assets we're talking about here. Like I said, longer lived assets, um, ones that we're going to depreciate as they lose value over time as we continue to use them. Okay, the way we're going to approach this chapter, because it is a longer chapter, is we're going to approach it like it's the life cycle of the plant assets. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is the acquisition costs of the assets or the purchase of the asset. Secondly, we're going to look at maintenance costs related to the asset. Then we're going to show you how you depreciate the asset, right? The idea is that you're spreading the expense of the asset over its lifetime, over the period of time you're using it. It's matching principle. And we're going to talk about how we dispose of an asset. All right. So starting off with acquisition, what, do, what costs get included in acquisition? Let me move myself here. It's really all the costs of acquiring asset, getting it to the purchaser, and functioning properly are included in the cost of the asset. Okay, so think about it. If you're buying one of these things, you're buying these long-lived assets, it's not just usually the purchase price that gets included. For example, if you were to buy a piece of land, it's not going to be just the piece of land that goes on your books, right? A piece of land is not just, let's say, a $50,000 piece of land. There are other costs associated with buying that land. Some of the examples, right, we'd include that $50,000, the purchase price, but maybe you have taxes that are owed on that land, um, taxes that haven't been paid for a while. Well, you have to pay for those taxes in order to acquire the land. Maybe you have to pay for a survey on the land. Maybe you have to pay a realtor some sort of commission fee. Um, probably you're going to have some legal costs, right? You have to pay the lawyer to buy the land to deal with the contract. Grading the land. Grading the land means making it the way you want the land. So I like to say you want the land the way you want the land. If the land has a hill on it and you don't want the hill there and you have to pay somebody to come in and flatten out that hill, that's grading the land. You're making the property the way you want it. Hills, no hills, however you want it. Um, in addition, you might have some unwanted structures. Maybe you have an old building on there. You don't want the old building. You want the land. So if that's the case, the cost of removing those unwanted structures would be included in the cost of the land. So see how it's just not just the purchase price, the 50000 It's all of these other costs, maybe let's say another 30000 No, that's a little high. Another $15,000 worth of costs. You would put the land on your books at the 50000 plus all the fifteen. I'm making up numbers here, $65,000 of costs. The point is, is when you acquire these assets, it's not just the purchase price. It's all of the other costs surrounding acquiring that asset. All right, so land improvements. Let's talk about that. Land is land. Land improvements, though, land improvements are more like driveways and walkways and signs and light posts and things like things of that nature. Okay. Land improvements do kind of lose their value over time, right? A driveway would lose its value over time. Um, you know, sidewalks lose their value over time. So the idea here is land improvements do get depreciated. The only one of these, and I'm going to say it probably three times at least, is land is not depreciated. Land does not lose its value over time. Everything else we talk about does, all right? So land does not lose its value. All right, let's get back to land improvements. So 
Obviously, right, fences, parking lots, things I just talked about, light posts, landscaping, all of these are considered land improvements, and they do lose their value over time. All right? You would add all of these costs together, and they would be depreciated. All right, building. Well, you, if you're buying a building, certainly have the purchase price would be included in the cost of buying the building, but also things like taxes and realtor costs and the legal costs, right? Same, similar kinds of things as above. Um, renovation. If you want to, to update the building in some way, that's going to be included in the cost of the building. That's not like a maintenance thing. That's you're getting the building the way you want the building. You're making the asset usable. Um, if you're building a new building or adding on, those construction costs would be included in the cost of the building. And any interest you pay on those construction loans, that'd be included in the cost of the building as well. All right, so let's talk about equipment. Equipment's a little bit different. The way you kind of think about equipment is everything it takes to get the equipment to you and working properly. All right, that's the key there. Everything to get the equipment to you and working properly gets included in the cost of the equipment. All right, so clearly the purchase price is included. Transportation, everything to get it to you, right? So if you have to pay to ship that equipment to you, it gets included in the cost of the equipment. All right, um, taxes, of course, right? Not getting away from that. Installation costs, if you have to pay for it to be installed, you have to get it to you and working properly. So that's the installation part of it. All right. Um, Refurbishment. What if you have to update it, right? Fix some parts that maybe weren't working so well and so on. Okay, that's going to be included too. Uh, getting ahead of myself here. Um, okay, the things that are not included in the equipment, I want to point out. Things that are not included are if somebody made a mistake. Let's say somebody, the equipment fell off the truck by accident and you have to pay for it to fix it. This kind of falls into this like whoops category and you would not include that with the cost of the equipment. All right, or let's say that, you know, an act of God picked up your piece of equipment and, uh, you know, with a hurricane and, you know, beat or, you know, some act of God, like lightning bolt came down and struck your piece of equipment and you had to fix it. Again, not included with the cost of equipment. So to the extent there's some kind of like whoops, mistake, vandalism, tornado, um, you're not going to include any of those costs in the cost of getting the equipment because that's not a normal cost, right? That's some sort of like random expense, some sort of miscellaneous repair expense. Okay, but the point is, is those kinds of like, whoops, somebody made a mistake, something bad happened, do not get included in the cost of the equipment. All right, so if you remember the sentence, all cost of acquiring an asset, getting it to the purchaser, right, that's that transportation, and functioning properly are included in the cost of the asset. One other thing, um, with the equipment, you know how if, if you plug in a piece of equipment for the first time and it's producing something, right, you're manufacturing something, it's probably not going to produce it perfectly on the first time, right? You're going to have to calibrate the machine and get it so that it works. So if that's the case, you're probably going to waste some product along the way. And if you do, that gets added into the cost of the equipment because it's everything to get it to you and working properly. So if it doesn't work properly because you have to calibrate it, you know, toss some scrap material, some scrap that you wasted, that gets added in. All right, so one other area about acquisition I'm going to talk about is something called lump sum asset purchase. What if you buy several items for one cost? How do we treat it? All right, so let's look at this as an example. It's the best way to show you this. Uh, Concord Pet Care Clinic paid $210,000 for a group purchase of land, building, and equipment. At the time of the acquisition, the land had market value of $110,000, building $88,000, and the equipment $22,000. So if we added all these guys together, guess what? They come out to more than $210,000. So the idea is that somebody paid $210,000 and they got several things, but cumulatively they were worth more than two ten. dollars So let's take the pieces apart. The assets we acquired, land 110, building 88, equipment 22,000. The total on that is 220,000. Okay, so we've got a bit of a discrepancy here. We can't just record these for these amounts because we really only paid 210 for them. So what we're going to do is we're going to prorate the amounts. So we've got land. What we're going to do is we're going to look at land, 110,000, as a percentage of the total fair market value of the items that I purchased. So 110 out of 220, land is worth about half of what I paid overall, right? Because 110 over 220 is 
50% of the 210,000 that I paid is 105,000. As far as I'm concerned, that is now what the land is going to be recorded for, 105,000. Okay, so that's our new value. The building, we're gonna do the same thing. Building's fair market value is 88,000 out of a total of 220. It's 40% of the overall asset purchase. So times 210, right? The amount I actually paid for it, the new value is 84,000. And last but not least, the equipment 22 over 220, right? The 22,000 over 220 here. The equipment of the overall purchase was worth about 10%. So 10% of that 210,000, you're at 21. So if you add these guys together, you should have 100%, right? Hopefully you didn't make any mistakes there. And the total value, this double check for yourself, should be the 210,000. That's the 210,000 that I paid for it. Okay. So now we're going to journalize these things. We're going to debit land for 105, building for 84, equipment for 21, and the cash. Oh, well, in this case, I paid a note. Sorry. So it's not a credit to cash. It's note payable. Credit to note payable for 210,000. And that is a lump sum asset purchase.